Hi, my name is Vincent and today I want to take a look at solving trigonometric equations. So we have the problem, find all the values of theta in the interval from 0 degrees to 360 degrees that satisfy the equation sine theta plus 5 is equal to 6 times cosine of 2 theta. Now this problem is arguably one of the most challenging types of problems you'll come across in high school trigonometry. Reason being that it's just packed with numerous concepts. It's almost like a summation of the entire trigonometry curriculum. So when we're looking at this equation, we have sine theta plus 5 is equal to 6 times cosine of 2 theta. We need to be careful with this problem and break it down into many steps. So we want to make a substitution for cosine of 2 theta using one of the double angle identities. But the problem is, we need to know which one are we going to choose. Well, the goal with this problem is to set up a quadratic equation of some sort. That is, we need an equation in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero, where a, b, and c are some non-zero constants. Well, mainly a can't be zero because then we won't have a quadratic equation. So, when we get the equation in this form, then we could go on to the next step of the problem. So the question is, which one of these are we going to choose so that we could set up a quadratic equation? Well, we're going to have to go with line number 3, because if we were to use any of the other lines, notice how we have sine theta, and we can't make a substitution for sine theta. So when we substitute for cosine 2 theta, we want to have the same trigonometric function throughout the entire equation. And this is the only line of the double angle identities that uses strictly sine. This line uses cosine, and this line uses cosine and sine. So we want to keep all the trigonometric functions the same. So we're going to use line 3. So we'll call this step 1 of the problem. For step 2, we're going to make a substitution. We have sine theta plus 5 is equal to, and now we have 6 times, and we're going to replace cosine 2 theta with 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. All we're doing is making a direct substitution. So now for the next stage of this problem, we're just going to distribute. We have 6 times 1 and 6 times negative 2 sine squared theta. So the next line is going to read sine theta plus 5 is equal to, and now 6 times 1 is 6, and 6 times negative 2 sine squared theta is a negative 12 sine squared theta. But now, similar to when we're solving quadratic equations, the most important strategy we need to keep in mind is that we need to get everything on one side of the equal sign. So we're going to move the right-hand side to the left-hand side. We're going to add 12 sine squared theta to both sides. And what we also need to do is subtract 6 from both sides. So on the, on the right hand side we have 6 minus 6 is going to cancel and negative 12 sine squared theta plus 12 sine squared theta is going to cancel as well. So the fourth stage of our problem we can now write we have a positive 12 sine squared theta. So we have 12 sine squared theta and now we have a positive sine theta so we can write plus sine theta and now 5 minus 6 is negative 1, so we have minus 1 is equal to, and now the right hand side completely cancelled out, so this is all equal to 0. So now this will conclude the first stage of this problem, so the next part of the problem we're going to focus on finding the roots of this quadratic, quadratic equation that we have here. So now we want to focus on the equation 12 sine squared theta plus sine theta minus 1 equals 0, and we want to use concepts of finding the roots of a quadratic equation to get to the next step of solving this problem. But before we move forward, let's let x equal sine theta. And the reason why I want to make this substitution is I find that most students will have trouble using the quadratic formula when their quadratic equation has a variable of sine theta. So we'll make this substitution and then we'll switch it back at the end. So now our new quadratic equation is 12x squared plus x minus 1 is equal to 0. Notice all I did was replace all of the sine thetas with an x. So this is our corresponding quadratic equation. And notice if we, if we write down our a, b, and c values, we have an a value of 12. 
we have a B value of positive 1, and we have a C value of negative 1. Remember, if there's no number before the X term, it's just assumed to be a 1, because 1 times X equals X. So now we could use the quadratic formula. We have X equals negative B, so we have a B value of 1, so that's what we're going to substitute, plus or minus the square root of B squared, where B is equal to 1, minus 4AC, so we're replacing A with 12, and we're replacing C with negative 1. And this is all over 2 times A. But remember, our A value is equal to 12. So we'll call this one line 2, and this will be line 3. So now for line 4, what we're looking at is we have X equals, and now we have negative 1, plus or minus, and now 1 squared is equal to 1, and we have minus 4 times 12 times negative 1 is negative 48 all over 2 times 12 is 24. So now for the next line of this problem, what we need to do is we need to simplify this a little bit more. So we have x equals negative 1 plus or minus. Now 1 minus a minus 48 turns into 1 plus 48. So we're looking at negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 49 all over 24. So this gives us, for the next line, we have x equals negative 1 plus or minus 7 over 24, since the square root of 49 is 7. So now we have two possible roots. We have x equals negative 1 plus 7 over 24, but negative 1 plus 7 is 6. So we have 6 over 24 is our first root, and we have x equals negative 1 minus 7 over 24, but negative 1 minus 7 is negative 8. So we have negative 8 over 24. So now we need to simplify. And we have x equals, this simplifies to 1 fourth. And x equals negative 8 over 24 simplifies to negative 1 third. So now, to finish off this next segment, we can make the substitution now back for sine theta. We're, we're going to replace x with sine theta now. So for line number 9, we have sine theta is equal to one fourth, and we have sine theta is equal to negative one third. So now for the next stage of solving this problem, we're going to leave off with what we just found here. So now we can focus on the last stage of solving this problem. We left off with sine theta equals one fourth and sine theta equals negative one-third. So to solve and find the values of theta for these two cases, we want to make use of the inverse sine function. That is, we're going to take the sine inverse of both sides to find out what theta equals. So theta equals the sine inverse of positive one-fourth. And after we evaluate this in our calculators, we should get theta equals, and now we have 14.477 5, 1, and this decimal will continue, but we want to round our answer to the nearest hundredth. So we're going to look out up to the hundredths place, and we're going to look one digit to the right, and this tells us that theta equals 14.48 degrees. Remember, we're looking for our answers in degrees between 0 degrees and 360 degrees, which 14.48 does fall in that interval, so we could circle this as one of our solutions. But now to find the second solution in this particular case, we'll separate the two cases. We're going to make use of the concept of reference angles. So we look on the Cartesian plane, where you can label our x and y axes, and we note that all of the trigonometric functions are positive in the first quadrant, only sine is positive in the second quadrant, only tangent is positive in the third quadrant, and finally only cosine is positive in the fourth quadrant. So our first solution was to the problem sine theta equals positive one-fourth. So we know that this value of theta falling in the first quadrant is a good thing because we should find something in the first quadrant if we are to find a value of theta that makes sine positive. But sine is also positive in the second quadrant. So we're going to shift our focus over to quadrant two. And we note that our reference angle 
is 14.48 degrees. So we're going to extend our reference angle 14.48 degrees into the second quadrant. So now remember, a reference angle uses the x-axis as one of its segments to build the angle. And the reference angle is always a positive acute angle. And it helps you find other solutions of these trigono uh, trigonometric problems. So we look and we say, well, what is the measure of the angle from standard position? Because this angle of 1448 degrees is coming from quadrant two. It's not coming from standard position. So to find the exact measure of this angle, we're going to be looking at theta equals 180 degrees minus 14.48 degrees. So now this tells us that our second solution is 165.52 degrees. Which makes sense because the measure of this angle is less than 180 degrees, but if we add 165.52 degrees and 14.48 degrees, it'll give us 180 degrees. And one thing I would advise, go ahead and find and punch in sine of 14.48 degrees and sine of 165.52 degrees, and you should get something really close to one-fourth, considering the fact that we rounded off these two angles. So now we're going to do the same thing for the second case. We have sine theta equals negative one-third. So to find theta, we're going to take the sine inverse of both sides. So we have theta equals the sine inverse of negative one-third. And after we evaluate this, we'll wind up with theta equals negative 19.4712. And this decimal will continue, but we only care we're going to round to the nearest hundredth. So we look up to the hundredths place, and we look one digit to the right, and this tells us we're going to round to negative 19.47 degrees. But now, we need to be careful because our solution has to be in the interval of 0 degrees to 360 degrees. So we can't use this solution, but we need to analyze what is this angle. Well, if we look on the Cartesian plane and we construct an angle of negative 19.47 degrees, we're extending into the fourth quadrant instead of going counterclockwise as we normally would if we had a positive angle. So this angle here is 19.47 degrees. So in some sense, this just told us our reference angle. But we're going to use the concept of coterminal angles to find the exact measure of this angle in standard position, as if we were clocking around counterclockwise. So now, what is the measure of this angle? Well, we could always add 360 degrees to an angle and we'll generate angles of equal measure. Just think, if I'm standing here and I spin 360 degrees, I'm facing the exact same way right back at the camera. So that's what we're doing for this problem here. We're going to add 360 degrees. And after we simplify, we get that theta is equal to 340.53 degrees. So this is one solution, and it falls in that range of 0 degrees to 360 degrees. So now we're using this reference angle of 19.47 degrees to find our second solution to this case here. So we're looking at a Cartesian plane, and we note that the same as before, ASTC. We're just going to rewrite this, ASTC. And since we're looking for the values of theta that make sine theta equal to negative one-third, we care about where sine is negative. Well, sine is positive in the first quadrant because all the trigonometric functions are positive there. It's positive in the second quadrant since only sine is positive there. So now where is sine theta negative in quadrant 3 and 4? The first solution we found was in quadrant 4, so we're going to be targeting quadrant 3. So we're extending using our reference angle of 19.47 degrees, and we're extending it into the third quadrant. So now the question is, what is the measure of this angle from standard position. Well, this means that we're going to be clocking out from this point here in standard position and we want to find the measure of this angle. Well, notice how we go half circle. We go 180 degrees and then we go 19.47 degrees. So our second solution is 180 degrees plus 19.47 degrees, which tells us our final solution here is we have 199 0.47 degrees. 
So now we could finally write a solution to this problem. We were looking for all the values of theta in the interval from 0 degrees to 360 degrees that satisfy the equation sine theta plus 5 equals 6 times cosine 2 theta. And our solutions are, we have theta equals, and we're looking at 14.48 degrees. Our second solution is 165.52 degrees. Our third solution, we have 199.47 degrees. And then finally, our fourth and last solution is 340.53 degrees. So as you can see, to solve this problem, we needed numerous techniques, but as long as we solve this systematically, we get to our solution to this problem. Okay, well this is going to conclude this video on solving trigonometric equations. Thank you all for watching and I hope that this was helpful.